Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'm so glad that we get to be back here. Um, this is exciting and fun. Um, we've got lots of visitors, so thank you uh, for joining us. I hope that you have a good time this morning. Um, we're blessed to have you here to worship with us. Um, I do have a couple things I want to go over. I know we flooded you with information the last ooh, a whistle. Uh, the last week. Um, but I just want to go through the things that we kind of set in place to, to get back to um, normal here at the church. Um, and so I'm just going to run through those really fast um, so everyone is aware of kind of what we're, what we're putting in place for, for safety. Um, and so um, some of you, when you walked in, probably looked for bulletins. Um, the bulletin is only online right now, so if you've got the Version Bible app, you can pull that right up, um, and it'll have all Donnie's sermon notes on it, and you can fill in the blanks. And, and so, um, But it's the Version Bible app. Um, until further notice, we're, we're, we're going to be sticking to this 10 o'clock service, um, and so there will be no Sunday school or children's programs. The nursery is, is, is shut up and, and locked, so um, Noah can be in there. Um, We've got offering drop boxes at the doors, or if you're using the online um, giving, awesome, that works. Um, those of you who are watching this later, um, you can still send in your checks to the church. Um, lots of ums. During our, our, our communion, um, some of you might have noticed a blue X on the, on the floor there. There'll be four ushers come up, and they'll dismiss you in sections. Um, by rows, and there's four different stations where um, you'll go over and take communion there, and you can throw your cups in the trash nearby. Um, at the end of service, um, we will dismiss by rows. Um, we don't want to like kill mingling and stuff like that, but we do want to because we get really congested at the back, and we've had to spread out chairs. Um, so be like, feel free to, to mingle outside. Um, and yeah. Uh, parents, we ask that you make sure that your kids are, are, are following the social distancing guidelines. Um, and then the last thing, and I think this is probably the most important, um, is we ask that you, you're, you're grace-filled and you're courteous towards other families. Um, it's not a time to, to come and express personal opinions about the situations we're going through. Um, church is about one or two things, really. Um, it's about just honoring God, and it's about uh, building up each other and encouraging one another. And so that's what we want to focus on while we're here. Um, and so... We appreciate everyone's views, but um, we ask that this, that's what, that's what we're going we're gonna to remain about God here and, and encouraging one another. And so um, with all that being said, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to get into some worship, which I'm excited for. So if you want to stand and join me, we're going to pray and then start some singing. Father God, we just thank you so much. God, we thank you that we can be back together. God, we pray for the safety of um, God of all of our, our our church family and our community. God and um, God, we just pray for the health of those who are um, God who've been affected by this this virus and any other thing. God, we just pray um, that you just continue to watch over um, your people. God, we love you so much. God, we thank you for your your grace and your mercy that you give us every day. God, we thank you for. Um, the, the church family. We've missed each other so much, and we just thank you. Um, you've blessed us with such incredible people um, that it's just a joy to be around. God, we love you, and we pray that, that we are honoring to you today um, and every other day, God. Um, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen.
your freedom is all that I know The old man Jesus when I made you You call my name
laid on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested, my life began. When death was arrested, my life
1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ has suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. My name is Walter Prosser, and I'm a member here at uh, Cedar at uh, St. Joe Church of Christ today. <laughs> oh, well, we all make mistakes, don't we? Uh, when we gather around uh, for this time of uh, the service, uh, we think mostly of Jesus' uh, death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. But because of the pandemic going on, I'd like to focus on something uh, a little more different today. And for the last three months that uh, we haven't been able to meet together, and it's going to go on for a while, I think, before this uh, is all over with. I want to go to John, the, uh, the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. And in the 14th chapter, it's all red lettered edition, so it's Jesus speaking. And he's talking to his disciples. And uh, if you are a follower of God, then you are a disciple today, and he is talking to you and me. He tells the disciples that I am going away. I'm going back to my father's house, and I'm going to prepare a room for you, and later I'm going to come and get you and bring you back. And this kind of made the disciples kind of uneasy because they thought that Jesus was going to be with them forever here on earth. But Jesus tells them, don't fret about this. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send a counselor to be with you in my absence. And then we find out the counselor is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us and gives us directions as we live our life here on earth. Directions like those that are staying home today, uh, the counselor is helping you make that decision. Those that are wearing masks and uh, social distancing in public, 
the counselor is helping you make that decision. And so each of us um, is guided by the counselor that's in our life. And uh, we need this in this time. And he uh, gives us guidance. He gives us understanding. And uh, he gives us protection from uh, the world. So uh, I want us to remember these things as we uh, go to the Lord at this time. And when you get home, I uh, go ahead and read that 14th chapter of John, and you'll see uh, get a lot of meaning from it for times like this. Shall we go to the, word, the Lord in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love, your kindness that you showed to us, and for going to that cross of Calvary and there dying for us. And we thank you, Father, for the counselor that guides our lives while we are here on this earth. And we love you so much, Father, for what you do for us. And we uh, just uh, continue to be with us through this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, in that video, you'll notice that all these hands are intentionally doing something. They're, they're moving, they're living, they're acting, they're uh, pushing things, they're showing some sort of celebration or emotion. We are in a time of intentional living, whether we know it or not. 
And uh, what I was going to say, we were really quiet during our worship. And part of it, there's this unease, there's this unrest of how are we going to do this? How are we going to relate to one another? How are we going to sing out loud? We're spread out. It's different. And nobody really likes different except for the weirdos like me. And so we have to intentionally see how we're going to adjust and change through this time. We are in a sermon series of intentional living. It's not, this whole series is to help us learn how to intentionally live instead of letting things happen to us. This week we continue this series. Last week we looked at the intentional mothers. And we had so many great influences in our lives in that. And, and the church, in honor of the moms, we gave a donation towards the DeKalb Pregnancy Center to help promote even more godly moms to make proper choices and to raise up their children in the right way. Before we get into this topic, though, um, of intentionally living, we need to define a few terms. First, and, and I'll just realize there is probably a typo in here because I typed this up. So I, I found it in my sermon this morning as I was going over it. But first, intent. Intent is a determination to act in a certain way, to have resolve. Resolve. Fixity apparently, of purpose, resoluteness. I like that word, resoluteness. And when I looked up resoluteness, a firm determination marked by boldness and steadiness. To live intently means to have result, um, resoluteness in our lives. With those definitions, I was looking at how do we talk about an intentional living, and, and I kind of came up with this phrase, an intentional life is one with purpose. It's not one that's aimlessly walking around or aimlessly letting things happen. It is intentional. It has a purpose. When you have children in the, in your home, your purpose is to get them out. Right? You don't want them there forever. You, you love them and they're cute and then they turn into teenagers. It's like, go get a job. Right? But your intent is to really train them. Teach them, grow them so they can stand on their own. When you, when you get married, you have an intent. You have resoluteness to love, to honor, to cherish, to protect, to provide for. We need to have a purpose when we live with our, within our faith. With this in mind, let's begin to explore what an intentional life means. Because we gotta see what does this mean in our own life. Why, why is this even important? And the answer is simple. If we do not have an agenda for our lives, one will be provided for you. If you don't have intentionality in your life, if you don't have a purpose, one will be thrust or given to you, either by the events of your life or by other people. To live intentionally means we live with purpose. I've repeated that for a reason. It means we are taking control and determining how we're going to live our lives, how we spend our time, our energy, and our resources. Without such a plan, life can get away from us. Have you ever felt like that? That life just gets out of hand and it's just gotten away from you and you can't grasp it. It kind of sounds like the last couple months, right? That it's just snowballing and going and we, we've lost our intent for some of us. We've lost our focus. For many of us, we had this weekly reminder where we'd gather. We'd, we'd solidify our faith as we joined with other believers and we'd honor God and encourage one another and, and that changed for a couple of months and it, it was awkward. And then this morning many people are like, can I wear my PJs again? Because they, they started getting used to that new normal and some of you are like, yeah, I really wanted to do that. And, and others I've already been told, they said, we love your sermons on online because when I'm getting really awake at night and I need to fall asleep, I just turn on your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to say Croc's name. We have all had this upset and this intentionality has changed and it gets away with us or away from us. We need to come back with a purpose, a laser focused purpose in our life. And I want to lay a foundation why living, um, intentionally living is considered something vital to our personal faith. And this is why. God has a plan. 
God doesn't just let things happen. He has a plan. He intentionally does things. He mapped out things before the world began. Look what it says, Psalms 139. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day has passed. God had prepared, He had planned, He had mapped it out. Isaiah 46.10 Only I, this is God speaking, can tell you the future before it happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. Ephesians 1.4 Even before He, meaning God, made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in His eyes. He had a plan. He intentionally did things. God had a purpose mapped out before the world began. And Christians, we are made in whose image? God's image, which means we need to live in the same intentional, purpose-driven life. God's plans include all areas of life. Uh, many times we live compartmentalized. i, I just give you a synopsis. Usually, before all this thing blowed up, when I would come to work, I like to separate. I don't want to carry things at home too many times. So when I was on my way to work, onto the office, before I hit State Road 8, I would think about garden, fish tank, family, usually in that order. Okay, I'm making sure you guys are awake. And, and when I hit uh, State Road 8, then I changed my mind and focused only on ministry things. And then on the way from the office still ministry until I hit State Road 8, and then I started thinking about, okay, we got to, what are we doing for supper, and we're planning these things, what are we doing with the kids, and, and so I started compartmentalizing, trying to make sure that I devoted enough time and energy to certain things. Most of us do that, our home life, our spiritual life, we do that. A lot of times people are like, well, that's my Sunday clothes, this is my Sunday attitude, and we compartmentalize things, our recreation life, our school life. How many kids have really liked this blending of home and school life? Where it's, you gotta wake up, do schoolwork at home while you're eating breakfast and di uh, it's just not right. You, we like to compartmentalize where you go and do this thing. With God though, there is no distinctive difference between the differences in our own lives. He is concerned with every single aspect. God has a purpose, and He wants to work in and every. It's not like I sit there, well, my garden is my time. My fish tanks, those are mine, God. You just need to leave them alone. He is concerned with every aspect of our lives. And so to live an intentional life, we have to know God's plan is going to be accomplished. This is really crucial. Before we move on, God's plan, His plan is going to be accomplished whether we like it or not. How many of your mothers ever said that? You're going to do it whether you like it or not. Look what it says, Isaiah 14. The Lord of heaven's armies has sw sworn an oath. It will happen as I have planned. It will be as I decided. Psalm 33, 11. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. God's purpose was mapped out before the world and it includes all areas of our lives and it is going to be accomplished. So that leads us to the next thing. To live an intentional life, we have to know God's plan is unchangeable. Not only is it going to happen, it will be accomplished, but His will is not going to change. For Samuel 15, and he who is the glory of Israel will not lie. Nor will he change his mind, for he is not human that he should change his mind. We must understand that God has a purpose. He's mapped it out, right? It includes all areas, and he is not going to change it just because we don't feel comfortable with something or we don't like something. We need to understand that live an intentional life. We have to know that God has a will. He has a plan. He has a desire for us. And I know we're moving through this kind of quickly because I want to get to the really good stuff, but we've got to hit these things first. Every life has a part in God's will. Generally speaking, God's will is that all people will come to have a relationship. That's the general space of God's will. He wants everybody to have a relationship with Him. For those who are not Christians yet, God wants them to grow and mature so that they can choose Him. For those who are Christians, He wants you to grow and mature so that you can grow more and more into His likeness. 
That's the general will. Specifically, God has a will for each one of us individually. His will for you is not going to be the same as His will for me. This lot has a lot to do with many of you. I, I can tell you right now, I miss preaching. It's different when I'm in front of a camera. It, it just is. I get to see the lens, and then right next to it is a little picture of me. And so I'm preaching to myself, and it's awkward because I'm not sitting there going, oh yeah, that was a good point. Although I did on Sunday mornings while I was watching with some of you. At one point I went, yes, and Casey turned. She goes, did you just amen yourself? I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of did. It was, it was a good point. And, and, but it was different because I was preaching to a camera that was right about there. And, and I miss seeing your faces. I miss seeing the responses I get from people. Like some of you, when God speaks to you, and it's through something I said, you're like, oh, and I can see that. Or some of you I can see, you're like, what did he just say? And I realize, oh, I need to rephrase that and change that. And I miss that interaction. That, that's God's will for me is to preach. I've known that since I was three years old. I've said it since I was three. I'm a preacher. I'm going to preach. And this last few months has been hard not to just preach to people when I'd see them. That's my will. That's what God's will is for my life. He has a specific will for each one of you. It may not be to be up here on stage and be a dork and, and talk like this, but He has a specific will for each one of you. He wants you to know what His plan is. He wants you to know His intention for your life so that you can step into that intention. You can grow in it. You can flourish in it. And you can explode in faith and grow the kingdom. That is His intention for you, specifically. Now, how you do that, whether mom, dad in the home, workforce, school, teaching, I don't know. But He has one specifically for you. Look what it says, 2 Peter uh, 3.9. The Lord isn't being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. God has a will. He has a plan. He wants everybody to repent. He wants people to choose Him. And He is being patient. Me? God, can we just wrap this up and go to heaven? Wouldn't that be just better? We won't have to worry about social distancing in heaven. We won't have to worry about diseases or anything. And let's just go to heaven. Let's just go party, right? Why is He waiting so long? I want to get there, but God wants as many people as possible to get there. And so while I may think, man, he's taken a long time, God is looking at the people who are lost, who haven't found his plan, his intention for their life and taken a hold of it, and he's trying to work to reach them. Maybe he's trying to use us to do that for them. He doesn't force his bidding on us. He doesn't force us to do things. God has given us a free will, free choice. John 7:17. 7, Anyone who wants to do the will of God, notice who wants to do the will of God, will know whether my teaching is from God or is merely on my own. This is Jesus speaking. If you want to do the will of God, you have a choice to follow with God's plan or to abandon it. Our personal will, our free choice, determines whether or not God's purpose is going to accomplish in our own lives. Will God's uh, goal, will His will be accomplished? Absolutely. But will it be in your life is your choice. You get to choose if you want His will to be accomplished in and through you. It's going to be happening. It's going to happen, but you get to choose. And so this got me thinking, what, what can we say with certainty? Well, before, don't put that up there yet. Before we do the, I mean, there are certain things, certain times we want certain answers. I want to know when this is going to lift. I want to know if we're having church camp, which we are. I want to know if we can do this. I want to know. We want concrete answers. There are a few things that I put, but I thought of a few more this morning. There are three things about the future. And one of them is, you're going to get hurt. You're going to be betrayed. You're going to have people betray you and hurt you. 
But that shouldn't change how you respond to people, is it? You know it's going to happen. And I think, didn't Jesus know that? And He still went to the cross. Uh, here's the other ones I came up with. Certainly I can tell you three things about your future. First, every person's life will end. Somehow, sometime, it will end. We don't like that. But it's going to happen, right? Uh, Hebrews 9.27, just as people are destined to die once and after that they face judgment, you will face death. Immortal, or your mortal bodies will end sometime. We don't know how. We don't know when. Some of you kids, if you keep us behaving, you may find out sooner. Husbands, if you don't do that to-do list, we know it's going to happen. Secondly, the world as we know it will end. It's going to end. It's not going to stay this way. I'm not talking conspiracy theories here. The Bible has clearly said this world one day will be destroyed. It is going to cease to exist. And then the third thing, you can always guarantee every person will stand before God. Every person will stand before God. And then you'll explain how you lived your life. Romans 14 says this, For Scripture say, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me. Every tongue will declare allegiance to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. Uh, that right there should really shake us. Every single one of us, from the cute little ones here to the cute older ones here. Notice I said that. We will all give an account to God with how we chose to live, how we chose to act, the words we chose to say. If you've ever said, just a slip of the tongue, no. That's something you put in your head so it purposely can come out. I, I didn't mean to kick you. What would you do if your kid did that to you? Yes, you did. And you'd punish them. Why do we think we could get away with it? I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, yeah, you did. We will give an account for everything we have said, everything we have done. One day we will stand before God and have to give a defense for why we did or didn't do certain things. One day. So our bodies here on earth are temporary. This world is temporary. And then we get to stand before God. Those are three guarantees are going to happen. So, I want you to hold that nugget for a moment and let's move to this. To live an intentional life, we have to know God has um, always wanted a certain outcome for all mankind. It's not that He's purposed it, but He's wanted something. I want us to understand He has a purpose, a will for us, and then He has a desire he wants you. He desires that we all choose to go to heaven, but He's not going to force you. His plans, His will will happen. His desires are up to our choice. He wants to have a loving relationship. He wants to be in communion with us. And I don't mean the cup and the bread. I mean a communal relationship, something close. This plan started in the Garden of Eden and was frustrated when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's commands and they ate from the tree. After Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but Adam was, you know, he had to train his children in the farming and things that he learned from the garden. And they were out there training and, and they got near this one place and they weren't, they were prevented from going in and Cain and Abel are like, what is that place? And Adam turned, he goes, well, that's the Garden of Eden where your mother ate us out of house and home. I can say that last week. Come on, guys. Are you afraid to laugh at that? Jason's not because Vicky's not right here. So, Since the fall of mankind, God has worked to bring God, uh, mankind back to Him. Because mankind chose to sin, we chose to put that separation between us and God. God has go, had to go around our will to provide an area where we can come back into relationship with Him. Now, what does all of this stuff mean? What does this mean? Why do, why do I, should I care that He has a plan, that it's been mapped out, that His, His will will be accomplished? Psalm 130, uh, 139 says, 
We read this earlier. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. When I read this verse, I instantly went back to the ultrasound pictures I saw of, of my boys. I, I, we didn't get to see one of, of our daughter, but I saw this of our boys in, before I could even hold them. There was this fuzzy, grainy, weird looking picture, but I knew that was my child. And I, I was blown away. And, and I remember at one point we were trying to find out if Brady was going to be a boy or girl through this ultrasound, and I saw that and I zoned out. And they said it's a boy, and I, I really didn't hear. I was just so focused on, that's my child. And I had all these dreams and plans and before I could even hold this child. And that is nothing, nothing compared to what God has. He doesn't have a grainy, fuzzy, weird-looking picture of us. He knows us before we are born. He knows us. And knowing, knowing that He saw us, knowing that He knows what we are going to need, knowing that He knows what He's going to help us and grow us and build us and get us back into right relationship for eternity, knowing this helps me trust God. Because I know nothing in my life will ever catch Him by surprise. Have you ever thought of that? Nothing you do can ever catch God by surprise. He's not going to be sitting there going, whoa, I never saw that coming. There, if we were honest, some of you would have to admit that you got away with things that your parents never knew about. Right? Oh my goodness, I just saw some looks like, mm, yeah. And parents know this happened. My mom actually told me, she goes, just don't tell me. I don't want to know. There are things we think we get away with, but you know what? God sees it. God knows it. And we, sh we need to know, and this actually gives me comfort, He's never sitting there going, Donnie, I didn't think you'd do that. You surprised me there. There's times I know He goes, Donnie, why did you do that? There's other times, Donnie, yes! So glad you chose that. But knowing He knows me so well gives me peace. I can't surprise Him. He is that big. He is that smart. Since God is not surprised by the circumstances in my life, He is uniquely capable of helping me face and overcome anything that can come my way. There is nothing that can come into your life. Pandemic. There's nothing in your life. Social distancing. Jobs laid off. Nothing in your life can hinder you if you are in His will. If you are following Him, it may change how you do things. But you're still in His will. Nothing will surprise you. So what do we do with this? If you have not started a relationship with God, let me just say this. If you have not started a relationship with God, the one whose will will be accomplished, the one who has intended a a purpose for all things, the one who is going to get things done, if you have not chosen a relationship with Him, why? Why wait? Why not take that step and say, okay, I'm going to trust God, the one who did create, the one who does know me. We don't know when our lives will end. Grab that nugget again. We don't know when these bodies are going to end. We don't know when this world is going to fall apart. We've seen bits and pieces lately, right? We don't know if it's going to bounce back or if it's finally over and we get to go to heaven. We don't know those things. But we do get the chance to know the One who will carry us in and through them. We don't know the temporary, but we can know the eternal. And that is a big difference. We know our physical lives are temporary. Shouldn't we get ready for an eternal life? So if you have not chosen a life with Christ, why, why not? Why not start today? This next question is for those who have already chosen Christ, but if you have been in faithful in your Christian life. And I want you right now to think through your life. The last 40 days, if you have been unfaithful in how you've lived faith, if you have been unfaithful to honoring God, fulfilling those his will for your life. You should ask Him to forgive you to, re, 
turn back to Him, that repent. Being away from God is more dangerous for somebody who has already been close to Him than somebody who's never chosen Him. Scripture says that it is better for a person not to know me than to know me and then reject. The Bible says if you have had a relationship with God and then turned your back on Him, it had been better if you had never been born. That, that should kind of freak some of us out. It's not that I go to church on Sunday. It's that I know Him every single minute of my life and He knows me. If you're, if you're dealing with something in your life that is ungodly, do you know you don't have to carry it? I, I always pictured um, this uh, the sins that just kind of eat away at you as kind of like a cancer inside us. And you need it taken out. You need it removed. It's not something you can just take a pill for. You need it taken out. And there's only one physician who can remove that from you. And so don't, don't sit there and try to look down. And, I don't want to hear this. I Intentionally choose to say no to some things of this world and let God invade you. Let God come in and clean fix, heal, restore you. I, when talking about some of this topic to people, I've had people say, well, you, you just don't know. You don't, I've got to do certain things first. I, I've got to go this. I've got to say this. Maybe Just stop. Just stop. Those are excuses. Return. Just look at Him. I, I'll tell you something real quick. You have not done anything that surprises him. You have not done anything that made him say, I'm done with you. He is waiting. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, God. When, when my kids were little, not, they're not little now, but when they were little and they'd come up and they'd say, I'm sorry, Daddy. Do you know never once in my life did I say, you should be. Never once did I push them away and say, well, you go think about that. Anytime, every time, our kids have said, I'm sorry. Okay. And if that's how a fallen, corrupt person would accept his own children, how much would a perfect, loving God accept you? If you're facing a situation that has caught you completely off guard, you should ask the Lord to help you through it. Remember, he knows all the details of your life before they've ever happened, and He wants to truly help you. Turning to God will help you refocus those issues. You ever seen those big flashlights? They're like this big around. I used to play with them when I worked at the hardware store, and they were thousand lumens or whatever they are. And you can make it shine really bright, very wide. But if you focus that thing, we were almost burning our hands when we put our hands in. That's how focused that bulb that light was. When we come back to God, He focuses us, focuses us back onto His will. He shines that light so that all you can see is His will, so you can choose it. If you're acting one way at church, whether it's in front of the TV or here, and then a different with the rest of the world, ask God to help you. Remember, God does not divide our lives into different areas. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are here. It doesn't matter how often you come. It doesn't matter how much you've given. It doesn't matter who your friends or family are. It doesn't matter if you're a member of this church, Walter. Or <laughs> Love you, man. It matters if you're a member of his family. That's where it matters. And if you're struggling with the thoughts like, when will I ever get the right? Whenever will I get this right? Or what's the use? I'm just going to screw this up again. Remember what Paul wrote in uh, Philippians 1.6, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. If you believe anything about God, know that He's going to look in your life, and even though you can't fix it, I guarantee you, you can't fix it. He can. He who began that first work where we might have screwed it up later, He will continue it until the day that Jesus Christ says, okay, let's go home. 
uh, Walter was saying that, that Jesus went away to go fit, uh, fix and prepare a place for us. This is our time to say, you know what, God? I need you to intentionally teach me and lead me in this so that I can take your intentional message to the rest of the world. God operates in an intentional matter. He it works in an intentional way to help our lives. That is why this theme of intentional living is so important for this year. And who knew that it was going to be part of the pandemic where we're going to have to change how we do church to be more intentional so that the world can hear about our Jesus. We need to know first and foremost, why do we have to have intentionality in our life? Because God is intentional and we are created in His image. And if He has a purpose, if He has a will, if God is intentional with how He performs, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we live with intentionality, with our faith, with our love, with our grace, with our faith? Isn't it time that Christians said, I will be intentional? No matter the situation, I don't care if I'm six feet or 60 feet away from you, I want you to know that I am going to live intentionally for Him, with, and for you. Can't we all do that? Are you facing a difficult situation? Whether it's a past sin, whether it's a habitual sin, whether it's a certain situation you're in. Did it catch you off guard? Are you living a hypocritical life? Have you been wondering, when will I ever get this right? Why not intentionally choose to place it all? Whether you are not a Christian, a new Christian, or seasoned Christian, place it all back in the hands and say, God, help me be intentional. Go ahead and stand and join us.
what a an awesome opportunity we have god god is just so good to us and so um we're gonna have closing prayer by walter and then we're gonna sing one more song before we get out of here let's go shall we pray lord god almighty we thank you for this opportunity that we have to be here this lord's day morning we thank thee father for the opportunity to surround the table and commune with you this morning we thank thee father for the opportunity to give of our offerings uh, to you and uh, we thank you father for the message of the hour and may we father have the holy spirit in our lives to make the right decisions as we travel here on earth we thank you we love you and uh, amen all right let's do one more little bit of uh, praising god and then we'll get out of here y'all. We'll see you next week.